بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقوله وأحسنوا إن الله يحب المحسنين وأقسطوا إن الله يحب المقسطين فما استقاموا لكم فاستقيموا لهم إن الله يحب المتقين إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين وقوله قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله وقوله فسوف يأتي الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونه وقوله إن الله يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كأنهم بنيان مرصوص حسبك سنت الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاكبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إكرارا به وتوعيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد close your books inshallah quickly notepads everything okay we mentioned regarding um, the irad of Allah Azza wa Jal we mentioned am and we mentioned khusus who can elaborate on those two what is am general so elaborate on it Ewa Am falls into Kauniya It has to occur In every matter And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may love it Or Allah may dislike it Taib <coughs> Regarding uh, The Asi The one who sins Then He comprises of what? Just irada til qawniya. Who has the jum of the two? The believer, although not just the believer, the believer that that follows and carries it out. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> How can we distinguish between the two? Is there anything else? Huh? No, between irada, qawniya, shari'iya. You already mentioned that um, one has to occur. One Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perhaps loves or probably and, and the other one a shari'i Allah loves whereas the other one may love and may not love. But there was one that we mentioned. Do you remember? That yeah? Muhabba, that's that's correct. But there was one that we mentioned two weeks ago. In its of his, okay. In itself, so remember we said that. That is that a shariya lidatiha. But we mentioned irada til kauniya that it occurs for something else. So, huh? A greater benefit. But for example, it's n- it's not the the maksud. It's not in itself. Like the creation of iblis is not because of the creation of iblis. Is because he whispers, misguides others, and then others. The, what comes from that is. That the believers stay away from his plots and plans, and if they fall short, then they make toba. Whereas regarding the shari'iyya, then Allah intends that particular thing that it is. There's no other third thing connected to it, that salah, or um, the fasting, or any of the a'mal as-saliha. We'll start inshallah now. We'll start off with Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala. We're still talking about the muhabba of Allah, the um, the attribute that Allah loves. So, we'll start off by what Sheikh Al Fawzan he says. He and there's a question that is put: لماذا جاء المؤلف بصفة المحبة بعد صفتي الإرادة والمشية? So we have just previously covered that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has talked about irada. 
That's the attribute that we've been focusing on. And we also focused on Mashiach. So, Sheikh al fawzani mentions a few things, but I've turned it into a question. So, it's easier for you to understand and memorize. So, I, before I mention what Sheikh al fawzan mentions, I've put it into a question. So, why is the author, why has he mentioned muhabba? The attribute of muhabba to Allah, that Allah loves stray after al-irada wal mashiyah So if you put that as a question, then bi it will e- be easy for you to understand the answer. So the question is, why did the author stray after mentioning the attributes of irada and mashiyah Why did he mention muhabba? Shaykh al-Fawzan, he says, لما ذكر الشيخ رحم الله آيات التي تدل على الإثبات المشي والإرادة ذكر الآيات التي تدل على الإثبات المحبة الله عز وجل So after the author has mentioned regarding the verses that have affirmation of Allah's irada and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mashiya then he came with verses that affirm the attribute of love that Allah loves, muhabba. Why is this? This is the answer. Are you following so far? Taib? The answer is, Rad alaman sawa bin al wal mahabba. It is a refutation for those individuals, those misguided ones that say that Mashiach, the Allah, the will of Allah is like muhabba of Allah. Meaning, إِنَّهُ mutalaziman. They have to come together. So every time, so we elaborate, Sheikh Al-Fawzani says, so every time, فَكُلَّ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ فَكَدْ أَحَبَّهُ This is what they say now. The deviant sex, they say, every time that Allah wills something, Allah loves it. Allah loves it. So Sheikh Al-Fawzan, he says, that we have already mentioned previously, that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may intend that which he loves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may intend that which he does not love. So for example, al-kufr, and all of the other sinful affairs. وَقَدْ يَشَاء مَا يُحِبْ And sometimes Allah wills that which he loves, like iman and the rest of the ta'at, or the rest of the actions of obedience. So here, to elaborate a bit more, if you didn't catch it the first time properly, Sheikh Al-Fawzan first says, why did he mention muhabbana, the attribute of muhabba, after mentioning irad al mashiyah Because certain individuals from the deviant, corrupted belief, they say that everything which Allah wanted or intended, he loves it. And we've already previously said that, no, that's not the case. So this is why he brought this afterwards. So now, inshallah, we move on to Sheikh Uthayameen. Sheikh Uthayameen, <clears throat> you want to elaborate on some, like last week, we took Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi's brief explanation regarding some of the verses regarding where Allah mentions muhabba, affirming the attribute that Allah loves. And alhamdulillah, we elaborated a little bit on that. But now, there's kalam of Sheikh Uthayameen that he brings some extra that inshallah that did not cover in the explanation of Sheikh Ahmed. So I thought it was beneficial to utilize. First and foremost, regarding the verse in Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Regarding this verse, a tawab, that siga which is used here, a tawab in the Arabic language, it means kathir ruju ila Allah. It it is someone that returns back to Allah in repentance. It does it much, frequent. So it turns much back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And what is tawbah? Shaykh Uthaymeen says that Tawbah is Ruju ila Allah min ma'asiyatihi ila ta'atihi. So if you, inshallah, 
jot that down. That will perhaps come in your exam. If I say to you, what does Toba mean? Toba is Ruju ilallah min ma'siyatihi ila ta'atihi. That it is to turn back or to turn away from the sin, shall I say? Or to turn away from the sin to the obedience of Allah. Turning away from the sin, uh, sin or leaving off the sin to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh Uthameen says that this tawbah, and I think this is extremely beneficial for us to go over because we always fall short. And we need to be plentiful and increase in tawbah. So Shaykh Uthameen says that tawbah has five conditions. So we know what tawbah means, to refrain from a sin or leave off a sin, or to come away from the realms of dis- disobedience to Allah, to the obedience of Allah. And there are five conditions. Number one, these are the conditions of mother, tawbah. Al-ikhlasu lillahi ta'ala, to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That regarding your repentance, مخافت الله ورجاء ثواب, that you are sincere in making this toba, and you fear the punishment of Allah, and you hope for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's reward. So you're sincere in this, in this toba, and in that toba, you are hoping for the mercy of Allah, and you're fearful of. Allah's punishment. Number two, an nadam ala ma fa'al min dhamb. That you have remorse of the sin that you have committed. So you have remorse of the sin that you have committed. And its signs is that you wished that you would not have done that sin. Or you hope not to return to that sin. That is from the signs. Number three. Is this pace good enough for you to write it down? Like I said, just jot it. You can go back, inshallah, when you do your muraja and write it down properly. Number three. Al-ikla anidham. You have to refrain from the sin. Leave off the sin. So if that sin is something which is har- if sorry what if what you are doing ikla an dham you stay away from that sin by staying away from the haram if it's haram bitarkihi in kana muharraman leave it if it's haram wa tudarikuhu in kana wajiban yumkin tadarukuh that means so you 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 stay away from the sin you refrain away from the sin however you try to rectify. If it's obligatory for you to rectify, you try to rectify it with the best of your ability. Meaning that if that thing that you are repenting from constitutes, for example, you took someone's right, مثلاً, you stole something. So a part of leaving off that sin is that you need to rectify if it's possible. So for example, if you stole a particular item from somebody, Refraining from that sin and then rectifying it would be that you return that item that you stole, if possible. So this is why um, Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says here, if it's possible. Because there may be some circumstances you may not be able to rectify anymore. Or there may be some situations, I mean it's, uh, Ahl al talk about this. For example, like if you backbite an individual, mathalan. And you've made, you've stopped now that sin. But you need to rectify it. So you've taken his honor. You spoke about about, about him. So you want to seek um, forgiveness from him. But if you know by going to him, he or she has the character that will cause an even bigger fitna, then in such situations, Ahl al-Ilm say, it's better that you leave it, but you mention him or her in good in other gatherings. 
So these are just some examples to mention that if you can rectify where possible. Number four, Al-Azam ala an la yaud ilay. Number four, that you have firm resolve that you will not return to that sin. And number five, and not many ulama mention this as a shart, but indeed it is a valid um, argument. Shaykh Yameen, he says, أن تكون في وقت تقبل فيه التوبة. The when you repent, it should be done in a time in its time, shall I say? So then you're gonna wonder what is his time. So a person should rep- repent in its appropriate time or in its time, and when it is a time, it, the Toba has to be done before the sun rises. From the opposite direction. So if the sun. The sun rises normally from where? Which direction? Huh? From the east. So if it rises from the west. Once that sign is present. Then the toba will not benefit any individual. That's one of them. And the other one is. Hudur al maut, The time of death basically you're on your last breath and the time of death is coming your soul is about to be taken at that time you cannot make toba so as long as alhamdulillah so this is the fifth condition it must be done before the, these two things in order for your toba to be accepted and if it's done after these two thing uh, after these two signs either the time of your death or the sun rises from the opposite direction, la yanfa' tawbatukum. Your tawbah will not benefit. So, Sheikh Uthaymin goes on to mention, he says, for tawab is kathrat al tawbah. This, this, this sigha, the way this pattern in our Arabic language, at tawab, it carries the meaning in the Arabic, uh, Arabic language that it occurs often. So then Sheikh Uthimeen says that tawab means that it is done consistently and it is done a lot. So if we understand that this tawbah tawab, that Allah loves such individuals that he's done a lot, this necessitates there is a lot of sin in order for them to repent from that. So here we understand, وَمِنْ هُنَا نَفْحَمْ بِأَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ مَحْمَ كَثْرَ الذَّنْبُ إِذَا أَحْدَثَ كُلَّ الذَّنْبُ Tawbah. So regardless how much sins occur for the slave, Bani Adam, then he must repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يُحِبُّ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love him because of that. Because Allah loves the ones that repent oftenly. So then Shaykh Uthaymeen says that if the one that sins and repents much and due to that Allah loves him, then the one that does not sin just on an occasion, then min bab al awla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves such an individual. Meaning that if someone does it constantly and makes tawbah, yet Allah loves him, then the one that perhaps sins just of far less than min bab al awla, meaning that automatically necessitates that Allah will love such an individual. Shaykh Uthimeen, then he mentions regarding the in Allah you hibbu tawabin wa you hibbu mutatahirin he brings a nice faida he said huna jama' bayn at-tahara taharat al-zahir wa taharat al-batin here in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered between the purity which is from zahir which is outer and the purity which is within and he explains what that is at the the within, the tahara of batin, that is tawabin. They are the ones that repent. And al-zahir, they are mutatahirin. Those who focus on cleansingness and removing any form of impurities. And alhamdulillah, so there are two types. And they are mentioned in this verse. 
Then Sheikh Uthaymeen goes on to mention regarding the verse, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Say to them, O Muhammad, if they love Allah, then they should follow me, then Allah will love them. Regarding this verse, Sheikh Uthaymeen, he had some nice kalam. He said that the Salaf, regarding this verse, they referred it to the ayah al-mihna, yani al-imtihan. That this ayah, the Salaf, they would refer it to as the verse of testing. Or the verse, the verse of trial. What does that mean? There was a people that claimed that they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commanded his prophet to say to them, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ So then Allah commanded the messenger to say to them, If you love Allah, then follow me. So now, any person that claims to love Allah, if he has that claim, that he loves Allah, then we say to him, إِن كُنْتَ صَادِقًا فِي مُحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ If you are truthful in your claim of loving Allah, فَاتَّبِعُ الرَّسُولِ Then follow the messenger. Follow the messenger's sunnah. If you are truthful to your claim. But for the one that who invents into, into this religion, that which is not from it, and then he says, I love Allah and I love the messenger, but yet he has innovated in the religion, فَقُلْنَا لَهُ Then we say to him, كَذَّابِ O Kathab, you have lied. You have lied. If your love for Allah was true, if your claim of loving Allah was true, then indeed you would have followed the Messenger of Allah. So this here is something that we can measure what we have today, like the Sufiya and other than them that have so much balaya and they attribute it to Loving the Prophet. Like having all sorts of celebrations from his birthday, making cakes, cutting cakes. Likewise, all sorts of things. Uh, elevating him to that he is created from light. All sorts of innovations they have. But they attribute it to muhabba. They say it's love. That they love the messenger. And that they love Allah. So this ayah is a sign. That you, you will never ever find someone who is true to loving Allah contradicting and abandoning the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So every time Shaykh Uthiyameen says that you follow the sunnah of the messenger, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. So if you love Allah, so if the slave established that he loves Allah and he performs the wajibat and the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ Allah ta'ala يُحِبُّ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love him. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him more. This is a very, very important point that we should all reflect on. Fa'ida azim. Once Allah loves his slaves, and Allah gives to his slaves, in Allah يُعْتِيهِ أَكْثَرْ مِمَّا amal. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his slaves more than his action. Meaning, the action that you do, it does not, is not the equivalent of what Allah will give you. First and foremost, Shaykh Uthiyameen says that the nafs of Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nafs is greater than unforsida. That's number one. Then in the hadith al-Qudsi, to show you what we're trying to mention, Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah says, مَنْ ذَكَرْنِي فِي الْمَلَأْ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَأْ خَيْرَ مِنْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh, sorry, prior to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, مَنْ ذَكَرْنِي فِي نَفْسِي Whoever remembers me in himself, then I will remember him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever mentions me in a gathering, then I will mention him in a gather, gathering which is greater. To the end of the hadith, when anything that is mentioned, Allah gives more. You come to Allah walking, Allah comes to you running. So then, Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says that what Allah gives you, 
is far greater than your action. What does that mean? Just like Jannah. Sheikh Al-Fawzani mentions in the explanation of Shal al-Barbahari. And likewise, um, the other mashaykh, they mention. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Udkhulu al-Jannah bima kuntum tu'adun. Or enter into Jannah bima kuntum ta'amalun. Enter Jannah with that which you used to carry out. This ba here is ba sababiya. Meaning that it is a means for you to get into Jannah. But it's not the ba of nafi which you have in the hadith where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none of you will enter Jannah with your actions. And then they said, Hatta ya Rasulullah, even you are Messenger, Hatta anta ya Rasulullah, even you are Messenger of Allah. And he said, even me, if Allah does not shower, shower me with his mercy. So the difference between here, what is, how do we gather between the verses where Allah says, enter paradise with the actions that you carried out. And from the hadith to say that you won't enter Jannah with your actions. It seems to be like ish, a contradiction, ta'arud. Does anybody know the answer? Okay, Any, anyone else? I'll give you a clue. It's all to do with the ba. It has two different meanings. In the ayat, bima kuntum ta'amalun. Bi'a'malukum. The question is, in the verse, in verses, Allah says, enter paradise with what you used to carry out by way of actions. Bima kuntum ta'amalun. With that which you used to carry out by way of actions. So you've entered paradise because of the actions that you carried out in the hadith it mentions that the messenger said you will not enter paradise merely because of your actions stations la anybody huh shall i tell you or shall i leave it as a as a homework huh no I'll leave it as a homework that's something for you to all research. You have to understand the question first. What is the question? It seems to be a what? No, listen to the question. The question is simple as this. In the Quran, Allah says, enter Jannah. And why? Bima kuntum ta'amalun. Because of what you used to do by way of your righteous actions. And in the hadith, the messenger says, none of you will enter paradise because of your actions. And then they said to him, even you, O Messenger of Allah, he said, even me. So that is, so it seems to be ta'arud. It seems to be like a contradiction. So your homework is, inshallah, la, 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 homework. With dalil, nas, kalam ulama for next week, inshallah. Taib. So we'll move on. 157. We've still got time, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Sheikh Uthayameen, rahimullah, now brings um, five, it brings a bit more, but I've, I've selected five benefits. Five benefits regarding Allah mentions who he loves and how that should affect us. So the type of people Allah loves. So first and foremost, Sheikh Uthayameen, he says, وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So be good, carry out goodness. Indeed, Allah loves the muhsineen. So, Shaykh Uthimeen, he says, this, is, this shows that we should be good and do goodness. وَنَحْرِسْ عَلَى الْإِحْسَانِ And strive to carry out goodness. Why? Because Allah loves it. وَكُلُّ شَيْنْ يُحِبُّ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّنَا نَحْرُسُ عَلَيْهِ Everything which Allah loves, and we know that He loves, then we should be ardent and we should focus on that. So that's from the first one. We should know what Allah loves, and how, should he, how does He affect our life? Because if we know that Allah loves this, then we should increase in trying to do that. Because Allah loves it. Number two. وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be just. 
Indeed, Allah loves those who are just. Once again, يَقْتَضِي أَنْ نَعْدِلْ وَنَحْرِسْ عَلَى الْعَدْلِ Once again, this shows that Allah loves those who are just, so we should also be just. In our day-to-day lives, in all our affairs, we should be just and focus on being just because that is something beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third one, in Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. These are, for the, for the wise one, these are now clear-cut verses of who? My Lord and your Lord. Allah Azza wa Jal loves. So anyone with understanding would focus so much on these things because they're beloved to Allah. And that will bring about Allah loving you. So now Allah loves the muttaqeen, those who fear Allah. طيب? So this necessitates that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا نَتَّقِي الْمَخْلُقِينَ and not that we fear the creation. Muttaqeen, because we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Sheikh Uthaymeen explains right, not fearing the people. He said that it could be that we are embarrassed somewhat in front of the creation. So due to that, tarakna al-ma'asi. So, there's a certain sin that we may stay away from whether it's in public or just generally. Why? Because it's others can see us from the creation. And we fear their blame. And we fear what they may say about us, so then we leave that sin in front of the people. That is not taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. That is not the pure taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, taqwa is that you fear Allah. And you don't worry about the people. Shaykh al says, Aslah ma baynak wa bayn Allah. Rectify what is between you and Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify what is between you and the people. This is a very, very important point, my brothers and my sisters. <clears throat> regarding how we should fix our relationship with Allah. Because if we rectify our, what we, between, between us and our Lord then what comes with that as a natija, as a, um, a, natija, a, a as a reward, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your affairs with the people. And he uses this as a proof. Remember the verse, in Allah yudafi'u anil ladhina amanu. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defends those who believe. So if you're good with Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. If alma yaqtadhi ashar, therefore carry that out, what the sharia commands you to do, then you will have a good ending. Your aqiba will be good. Number four, very quickly inshallah, we'll round upon this one. In Allah yuhibbu tawabin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who repent often. This requires that a person turns back to Allah constantly. And he turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only by just mujarrad al-qawl. He don't just say that, oh, khalas, I make tawbah and that. Rather with his heart and with his actions and with his limbs, he turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma mujarrad al-qawl. For him just to say, khalas, astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Hada... This doesn't benefit. If someone just merely utters it on his tongue, but yet what is in his heart is by way of sin, what his actions is continuing in sin, this is not something that's going to help him. But rather, he should be aware when he's about to commit that sin, he should be focused. And when he makes that tawbah, then he makes that tawbah seeking the repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, that he may be amongst those that Allah were there on love. So you need to be sincere. You need to be truthful. And it's not just with statement, but rather it is with action. And Alhamdulillah, we've already covered, Alhamdulillah, the five conditions of Tawbah. So inshallah, these are some of the things that inshallah that we can mention for now. Naqtafi bihad al-Qadr. Memorize the points, especially the bullet points, and find out why or what the answer is, inshallah, to that question. And we're here 
next week that's your homework jazakum allah khairan naquli qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim